What is going on, Pixar fans? My name is John Solo, and I am incredibly excited because last week a trailer for the new Incredibles movie was released. It's not very long, and it doesn't really hint at a story, but it's still pretty awesome, and I desperately want to talk about it. So for those who haven't seen the trailer yet, check it out now. So what do you think? Everything you wanted and more? In all seriousness, my anticipation for this trailer was through the roof and I ended up being a little disappointed. Kind of like when they released that poster in 2015 and said coming soon. Why you gotta lie, Pixar? Jokes aside, there are a few things we can learn about and theorize about even with that little bit of footage, so let's go over it. First off, we see Jack-Jack, the youngest member of the Parr family, use the power of molecular self-manipulation. What this actually means is he can control how his physiology interacts with itself and the world around him. I mean, he can control it as much as you would expect a baby can. This power manifests itself in a few different ways, self-combustion, shape-shifting, and phasing, which is what he does through the wall. After picking himself up and walking a few steps, something we never saw him do in the first movie, laser beams, or as I like to call them, laser beams, shoot out of his eyes. You'll notice though, these lasers are different than the ones we saw in Jack-Jack Attack. They're green instead of purple, and they're larger. We'll talk about why that might be in just a minute, it, let's watch what happens at the end. We see Mr. Incredible holding Jack-Jack and he exclaims, You have power! <laughs> yeah, baby! Jack-Jack has powers. Now for those confused about how he doesn't know that, considering how the first movie ended, remember that the Incredibles family never saw him use his powers. The villain took him high enough they couldn't see what was going on, and Jack-Jack was back to normal by the time Mrs. Incredible caught him. Now there's one possible continuity error between the trailer and the movie. At the very end of the film, right after the Underminer reveals himself, we see the Incredibles family all wearing their crime-fighting masks, including Jack-Jack. One might wonder why why that would be the case if they didn't know he had powers yet. And there's a few possible answers to that question. Number one, it doesn't matter if they knew or not because the rest of the family was about to take on a supervillain. They needed to protect their identities and leaving Jack-Jack exposed meant exposing themselves. Not to mention, I'm assuming they didn't expect the baby to participate much in the battle whether he had superpowers or not. I'm not totally sure if the Rise of the Underminer video game is the official story for how they defeated him, but Mr. Incredible and Frozone are the ones who take charge in that storyline, so the rest of the Incredibles family wasn't really involved anyways. Number two, the alternative is this trailer takes place sometime within the three months between Syndrome's defeat and Dash's track meet. And personally, I kinda like that idea. We've seen Pixar make prequels, we've seen Pixar make sequels, but we haven't seen them make a uh, in between -quel. How crazy would it be if The Incredibles 2 was actually Incredibles 1 and a half? Disney did it once, so Pixar can too, right? Anyways, back to the trailer, there's one last important thing that happens. Jack-Jack sneezes and shoots out fire, electricity, and green laser beams. The fire is an ability we've seen before. The electricity is brand new, and the lasers used to have a different look. There's no way to tell why these additions and changes were made, not yet at least, but I do think they're easily justifiable. Jack -Jack is a baby. His own family assumed he didn't have powers because it took so long for him to show any signs of having them. The only normal one is Jack-Jack and he's not even toilet trained! <laughs> It's totally possible that as he ages, his powers evolve as well. Clearly not much time has passed since the first movie's events, but like I said earlier, he's walking around in this trailer. In the first movie, he didn't walk or crawl. He just floated around naked and did this. Small changes in characters like the ones we're discussing are typically used as storytelling tools to show that time has passed. So I think it's safe to assume that a few weeks and possibly a few months have gone by when The Incredibles 2 starts. Place Placing it in the perfect range to be an in between quill. I'm not sure if there's a difference between the speeds that a regular baby and super baby develop their motor skills, but 
That makes sense to me at least. And that is about every piece of information I could squeeze out of this trailer. Now I've got a question for you. What is one thing you really wanna see in The Incredibles 2? For example, I would love to see a movie version of how they defeated the Underminer. I don't care if it's in a flashback or shown on the cover of a newspaper, I just think that cliffhanger was too good for them not to address it somehow. After you leave that comment, which I may or may not use in next week's video, Make sure you also hit that like button as it supports the channel a whole lot and it makes my heart feel warm because it lets me know you care. Hit that subscribe button for weekly Disney and Pixar content and share this video with whoever you plan on seeing The Incredibles 2 with. It'll get them excited. I've also got the links to my social medias and Patreon in the description down below. Check those out as well. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, my name is John Solo and I'll see you soon. I don't know what in-between quills are actually called, so feel free to help me out.